Founding members recognize that long-term success would best be achieved by reserving a low-key respectability. Working with sympathetic members of the media, they promoted themselves as a quiet intellectual group. They also sought to protect this reputation by the public excommunication of one member. Havelock Ellis, a man committed to sexual revolution long before the term or idea had been invented. The core ideas to recast society were agreed on and distilled into a manifesto called the basis. Belief in these primary ideas was the minimum requirement for membership. It did not preclude other socialist ideas or objectives, but prioritized the core principles. The Fabian society consists of socialists. It therefore aims at the reorganization of society by the emancipation of land and industrial capital from individual and class ownership. If it sounds similar to communism, that's because it is. The Fabian's aim was to slowly shepherd the world toward a socialist future. But unlike the communists, the Fabians knew that this could be achieved bloodlessly and over time. The society took its name from the ancient Roman general, who was famed for his delaying tactics. Fabius Maximus, the Concator, did not have enough men to defeat the invading Hannibal in southern Italy. So he fought a slow war of attrition, whereby the Romans avoided open battle and wore down the Carthaginian army over many years. And so it was for the new socialist organization. They adopted the name and the tactics of the great Roman general. Along with that name, they chose an angry tortoise as their mascot, with the motto, I wait long, but when I strike, I strike hard. For a clearer idea of the Fabian's revolutionary spirit, we can look at the stained glass window commissioned in 1910, which is now located at the London School of Economics. The window shows two leading members reforging the world nearer to their heart's desire, and the assorted founding members praying to a stack of their holy scriptures, or tracts and essays. It's important to note that the Fabian coat of arms was a wolf in sheep's clothing, and the religious overtones of the window. The original members were quickly joined by other radicals who shared their worldview. Featured in the Fabian window, George Bernard Shaw and Sidney Webb quickly rose to leadership within the fledgling organization. Webb committed all his time and energy to the Fabian goals after marrying his rich wife Beatrice Potter. As an economist and political scientist, he produced a vast amount of the written Fabian works, including the history of trade unionism, which Lenin later translated into Russian. Shaw joined the Fabian Society shortly after its inception, long before he found critical acclaim as a playwright. Regarded as a brilliant polemicist and debater, the Fabians saw in Shaw the perfect man to help propagate and defend British socialism. Along with two later editions, the future Fabian missionary to the US, Graham Wallace, and the well-connected civil servant, Sidney Oliver. These four were the leading lights of British socialist thought and action for the next 30 years. And that thought and action did not just thrive in Britain. Using tactics later copied by other Marxist groups, the Fabians exported their sinister brand of socialism 
all over the world.